Hello Unigame fans, it's the week of the Steam Nix Festival which means literally hundreds of demos to try, so stay tuned to the channel for my top picks where I've always said that it's either very foolish or very brave for developers to be releasing their game on the week of the event, so here are 9 of note, beginning with Empyrean Galactic Survival Dark Faction, a paid DLC to a space sandbox survival game from 2020 that does not look the most visually impressive, but is of note since as of recording, it has 26,000 Steam reviews, which for context is more than Dredge right now, meaning that it has probably sold more copies, where survival games do have these massive audiences, with this update adding new scenarios in a new dark galaxy. We survive. The hit puzzle game Threes makes it to Steam 10 years after the mobile launch for some reason, being the original towel sliding number edition game that led to the most famous of clones in 2048 and its spin-offs, in which I do adore this game dearly but does seem to be best on mobile, so I wonder what kind of reception it will get. This video is brought to you by Necrosmith 2, the sequel to an excellent Necromancer simulator title with some roguelike-ish elements in which you play as the powerful sorcerer who sends out minions into the world from your own tower, using them to conquer the land. The main mechanic here is that you're creating these undead minions from body parts collected from your fallen enemies which consist of various fantasy races, mixing and matching parts in order to create unique troops that have the required abilities like flight to go forth and conquer. In this sequel, you're facing off against titans or gigantic monsters, but of course, also have the ability to create a megazord-like undead titan of your own. Enemies will attack your tower, so you need to fend them off with troops and powerful spells, where the original is a fantastic title and this should be as well. It will be part of the Steam Next Festival which begins today, so go play the demo and wishlist the game. Communist Bioshock Atomic Heart made quite the splash last year due to the action and character designs, in which their second paid DLC titled Trapped in Limbo will release this week. Interestingly, this is a direct continuation after the events of the main game, but continues a different ending as compared to the first DLC. We are now in the world of Limbo, which is just bizarre and weird, where the normal rules of the world don't seem to apply which is perfect for developers to flex their creativity, so expect things to take a twist for the weird. It's also a curiosity narratively in how they are exploring the different endings, perhaps trying to work out what will be canon for Atomic Heart 2, so check it out if you love the game. Here's a curious indie title titled Starship Rebellion, one that got my attention primarily because it showed off a turn-based RPG battle interface that has you controlling 7 party members all at once. But it's not just a simple RPG maker title, instead also having a turn-based tactics portion as well. It doesn't look the most polished visually, but it seems ambitious, with the developer's prologue demo Star Shift Origins being well received, and they have planned out the whole saga of games, including Star Shift Freelancer and Star Shift Legacy, both with Q4 2024 release windows, so it's something of interest for sure. Love indie games? Sign up to my newsletter to get a weekly dose of what's hot, along with some news and of course, weekly game giveaways, so if interested, link is in the description below. Here's a grimdark action-adventure RPG title named The Inquisitor that is based on a series of books of the same name, taking place in an alternate timeline in which Jesus did not die on the cross but instead fought free and brought vengeance down upon the non-believers, and 1,500 years later, an army of inquisitors brutally enforces the faith. 
you play as such a character sent to a remote town that is plagued by mystery and sin, being judge, jury, and executioner as you solve these cases. It's dark and brutal, and does seem more like the detective portion of The Witcher without as much of an emphasis on combat, although it is still there. So who knows, this might just be this developer's Witcher 1 in terms of kicking off something epic. I previewed this next title when looking at the upcoming games of the month, in which the Chinese or Eastern action RPG Tales of Spark sure looks like fun. I suppose you can think of this as Chinese Diablo, and in some ways, it does seem to be going for the Diablo 3 thing, with the skill cooldowns on the action bar that kind of looks similar to an MMO, but of course with much more hectic action. While the trailer is in Chinese only, there is supposed to be English language translation, with the best part being that this game has been out for a couple of hours now and already has more than 100 Steam reviews and a very positive rating, so sentiment seems to be good on this game, so perhaps check it out. If you're an indie developer and have no idea how to start with marketing your game, get on my mailing list via the link in the description below, where I'll send you some free templates and guides soon. Now the release of this title boggles my mind since I thought the developer would have known better since they have two releases under their belt and releasing in the middle of the Steam Nix festival isn't all that ideal so we'll see what effect that will have on which hand given that their estimated number of wishlists is good for an indie title but might not be massive enough to push back against the flood of demos. Still, this is a stack lens like card based management simulation in which you're opening random packs of cards and then placing them on other cards to simulate some action and while it's definitely not as action packed as some other games, stack lens was a massive hit for good reason so maybe this will be as well. You play as a witch, leading your coven in exploring new lands which does have their share of enemies in which, as compared to Stacklands, the play area seems to be much larger and looks fairly complex in terms of the simulation and the resources, units and enemies that you need to manage. I do think that it looks awesome and is the hidden gem of the week. Another title from the preview is Toho Danmaku Kagura Fantasia Lost, a rhythm game plus a bullet hell shoot 'em up title combining two genres that Toho games are known for into what looks like a very intense package. There are straight up Note Highway rhythm game segments, but more interestingly, combines a stripped down Note Highway of just a single lane on the left and right, with the center of the field being a bullet hell boss battle, and looks like a real challenge. Oh, as a side note, Toby Fox, creator of Undertale, is involved in this project on the musical front, so you might want to check it out. A sequel that is releasing 9 years after the original is Helldivers 2, in which the first game was a beloved co-op twin-stick shooter with friendly fire, forcing you to work together with your friends to protect Super Earth from the enemies of mankind. It does have starship troopers like Satire in the writing, which seems very funny and excellently done, with the sequel changing it from top-down to completely behind-the-back third-person shooter, but critically retains the same intense action, monstrous enemies, and of course, friendly fire. This is however not an indie team, with the developer feeling like a second-party Sony studio at this point, so there is an asterisk, but OG indie game fans will know that they made Magicka back in 2011, going back to its indie roots, and should be one of the best games of the year. A special shoutout goes to Patreon member and indie game ultra fan Sean H, and for more upcoming action titles, watch this video to discover 35 more.